Today we are going to be talking about culture. Before we start talking about culture and its seven elements, we need to talk about what is culture itself. Culture is all of the things that make up a people's way of life. All aspects of their life are part of their culture. And your culture is not something that you are born with. Instead, it's passed through family and friends. How we think, what we believe, what we think is acceptable what we eat, the clothes we wear, the jokes we tell are all part of our culture. So let's first look at the first element, social organization. Social organization is basically how a culture organizes members into smaller units. Most often than not, it's through family. It's the most important form of organization because this is where you get your culture from. One type of family is a nuclear family. This is the wife, husband, children, your basic family unit. Most of the nuclear families that you're going to find are common in industrial societies. That is societies where in the morning parents wake up and they go to work, children go to school or um, to daycare. Extended family is when you have several generations all living together. And this is more common in agricultural societies where the older generations educate and watch the children while the um, younger adults and middle aged adults do work like growing food or tending to animals. Those extended family members, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins are all necessary to keep the, um, the family intact. There are also different kinds of societies and um, these include matriarchal and patriarchal. Matriarchal societies are where you'll see the eldest female having authority where patriarchal is where the eldest male has authority. Um, the most common type of society is patriarchal. We also organize people by their social classes. That is ranking people based on their status, and your status can be ranked um, dependent on money, occupation, education, and so on. The next element is customs and traditions. Customs and traditions are rules for behavior, and there are major rules and there are minor rules. Minor rules include like what to wear, how to be polite, um, you know, how do you eat? Do you eat with forks? Do you eat with chopsticks? Do you greet friends with a handshake? Do you greet them with a bow? These are um, enforced by your peers. So, for example, it's probably not appropriate for a young man to wear a prom dress to school on most days and this rule is enforced by your peers your peers might make fun of you major rules about right or wrong these are enforced through written rules and uh, through laws we have a law that says you don't kill another person you don't rob a bank these are major rules what I'd like to do now is on your paper there are some examples of customs and traditions from around the world in terms of clothing and food. So you can see what kinds of customs and traditions in terms of those two topics you could find in those areas. The third one is language. Language is considered to be the cornerstone of culture because without language, people can't communicate. And if you can't communicate, then we can't pass on our culture. All cultures have some kind of language, spoken language, but not all have a form of writing. And that's fine not to have a form of writing as long as you have kind, some kind of spoken language or even body language to convey uh, some kind of communication. Oftentimes you'll find that people who have the same language have similar or the same customs. So people who speak English tend to have similar uh, customs and traditions and cultures. But there are some areas that speak several languages. Canada, for example, speaks English and French. Those are their uh, national languages. But in places like India, it can be even more than that. There are places in India where people speak more than 700 different languages and dialects. Up next is art and literature. The purpose of art and literature is to not just to entertain 
like reading a book or seeing a movie, but also oftentimes to teach values. For example, folk tales are ways for a culture to pass on their beliefs and values. You probably know a lot of folk tales. The Three Little Pigs, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, and so on. Another example might be The Tortoise and the Hare. For those of you who don't know this folk tale, basic idea of it is that a hare and a tortoise both race. The hare takes a nap because he knows he's going to win. The tortoise, slow and steady, wins the race and he goes on to, to win. This teaches that strength and determination are what a culture values, not laziness. Up next is religion. Religion is very important because Humans have a natural curiosity about what is the purpose of life. Religion helps to answer those basic questions. Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? What happens to me after I die? And the world's religions, which we're going to learn about this year, fall into one of two categories. They are either monotheistic or polytheistic. Monotheism is the belief in one God, mono meaning one. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are the three biggest monotheistic world religions. Polytheism is the belief in many gods. Polytheistic religions include Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and others. Up next is government. Government is made up of two basic groups. It can be the, the single person or people who hold power. For example, it could be our legislators, our mayors, the president. But it can also be made up of all of our laws and our political institutions. So the entire Supreme Court justice, um, the Bill of Rights. These are all part of our government. And the purpose of our government, and any government for that matter, is to provide for the needs of its people. When you think about our government in itself, think about all of the ways that it provides for what you need on a daily basis. And that could be protection, whether it's through laws, police forces, the army. It could be for people who need assistance for things like food, getting food stamps, and so on. The government is there to provide for the things that the people need. And there are various types of governments. Here are just a few. You've probably heard of a democracy before. A democracy was first developed in ancient Greece and this says that in this type of government that the government can only act with the consent of the people. So in order for the government to do anything in a democracy they first have to have agreement by the people usually through voting. In a dictatorship though this is when a single ruler or even a group holds power through force. Think Hitler where they've come in usually using some kind of um, military they hold their power. An aristocracy power is held by a ruling family like a king or a queen. This is similar to a monarchy. However in a monarchy it's one person that is holding that power. Sometimes this is passed down through uh, from family member to fa family member, usually through the oldest male. Last is economic systems. The idea of economics is how people use the resources that they have to satisfy their wants and their needs. For example, let's say a nation has an abundance of food, but they are lacking in, say, coal. Economics says that the people will then trade that what they have an excess of to get the what they have less of. So they'll trade their food for that coal. And economists are people who study these ideas. There are three basic economic questions that every society has to be able to answer. And how they answer them is how, what determines what kind of economy that they will have. They need to know what goods and services will be produced and how much of those will be produced. So how much coal are we going to produce? Are we going to produce coal and lumber or just coal? How will the goods and services be produced? Are they going to be produced by individuals, by companies, by the government? 
And the last question is, for whom will these goods and services be produced? Are all of these goods and services going to be handed over to the government for them to sell, or are they going to be given to individuals to sell for themselves? The basic type of economic systems include a traditional type of society, where most people produce what they need through hunting, gathering, and farming. So think what was going on a thousand years ago. There were no Walmarts to get their stuff. There were no big companies or anything like that. If you wanted something to eat, you went out and shot something or you grew it. If you needed clothing, you made it. In a market economy, this is also known as capitalism, where individuals make the decisions about what to produce and what to sell. Through that, they can make a profit. And a market economy allows for people to keep prices down because of competition. In this idea, it means that if you have two t-shirt producers, one's making them for $8, one's making them for 9 you can then go to the person that's making the $8 t-shirt and that keeps prices low. In a command economy, the government controls everything. This usually goes hand in hand with a dictatorship. They decide who's going to produce, what it's going to produce, how much it's going, it's going to cost, and who they're going to sell it to. In a mixed economy, this is a combination of both a market and a command economy. The U.S. tends to have more of a mixed economy. And what this means is that individuals can make certain decisions, but the government makes others. For example, in car production. The government says you have to have seat belts, you have to have anti-lock anti -lock brakes, you have to have um, emissions controls, but you can make them look however you want, whatever color you want, sell them for whatever price you want. Now, interaction between cultures, this is what happens when you have cultural diffusion. And there are oftentimes a couple of different responses to other people's cultures. One is ethnocentrism. And make sure you don't get these two confused, ethnocentrism and racism. Ethnocentrism is judging another culture by your own culture. So what this means is you have, the, have access to running water. Other parts of the world may not have access to running water. So for you to judge that culture and say, oh, that's disgusting, how can they not share? shower every day would be ethnocentric because in your culture running water is is standard and you have the ability to take a bath every day or shower every day but other cultures may not racism is the belief that one race is simply superior to another that one race is better no matter what there's an easy way to remember the seven elements of culture not quite as easy as mr. lip and the um, the elements of geography. This one's sort of a made up word, but it's a fun word. It is sklarge. It's just fun to say. S is for social organization, C for customs and traditions, L for language, arts and literature is A, R religion, G government, and E economics. Thank you.